rejoice and be glad in it. For the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. As you watch, as you view, as you listen, we invite you now to join with our choir. We sing an old favorite hymn of the church. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Then on the everlasting arms. Let us worship God in song. Eternal God, we thank you for being present. We thank you, God, for being God. We thank you, God, for being an everlasting arm. And on this Sabbath day to which we've come to worship, God, we lean not just for needs, but we lean, God, because you've already made a way. You've already answered prayer. You've already come through. And for that, we give you glory. Thank you, God, for those who assemble, those, again, who will watch, who will view. God, thank you, most importantly, for those who receive. We pray, God, as we worship on this Sabbath day, that you would indeed meet a need. God, we pray on this Sabbath day that you will help a hurt. God, we pray on this Sabbath day you will give somebody freedom and liberty from anything that holds them back. Thank you, God, for waking us up and clothing us in our right mind. Thank you, God, for giving us the spirit of worship today. And thank you, God, for making a way for not just our needs, but the needs of your community are met. Bless us, God, we pray that not our will, but thy will is done this day and forevermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, let all of God's children say amen. amen. Say amen again. Come on, put your hands together. Give God thanks and praise for who God is in our life.
God is still bringing you through something. If you can right now, put something in the chat box. Let us know how good God has been to you and how good that you are to somebody else. Oh, what a joy it is to be in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Dr. Monroe, thank you. Thank you, musicians, for being here. Thank you. Y'all, will you help me thank God for this outstanding choir? Yes, they are indeed singing the horns off a of billy goat. Amen. But we're grateful, grateful. Thank you all so much for being here today. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I don't know if you know this, but we are a part of a community, a larger community that celebrates the gifts from all above, from above. And that is that we have here in our presence the teacher of the year, Dr. Ronald Monroe from the Mary Oaks Elementary School. Praise God for you. Thank you so much. Teacher of the year. Dr. Monroe directing and being a part of our ministry team, we are celebrating with you on this day for that award. May God continue to bless you and those students to which you touch. I want to say thank you to our men this week, did an outstanding job, an outreach project with one of our senior members. Now, because it, it's probably raining or maybe snowing when you watch this service, so we want you to reach out and connect with somebody. Somebody make sure that they have water and food. Uh, don't try to get out there on the roads and try to help them. You might need to call them, amen? But just check in with somebody. Let them know that you're loving. And if you can, if you need to, we'll do all we can to reach out tomorrow. Tomorrow is a Martin Luther King a birthday celebration, so it's a day of service. And if you can get out, we invite you to be a part of a service in the community somewhere uh, this week. Want to give God thanks again for the opportunities of our Miles of Smiles ministry. Uh, we fed uh, many, many persons on Friday and Saturday uh, with a hot lunch and a hot dinner. So we're grateful for that outreach ministry, a part of the church. Do know, do know that C.N. Jenkins is on the move, continuing to minister to those in our community every Tuesday. If you are interested in serving, simply call the church. If you want to make a donation or volunteer, also let us know. This week we are premiering a hard copy as well as a soft copy of a monthly newsletter. And if you would like to receive a copy of that, simply call the church. Give us an address to where you want it sent to you. Or again, if you want an email copy, just send that uh, note to us in the chat box right now. Let's let it be known that you want to receive either a hard copy or soft copy of the monthly newsletter. The intent of this newsletter, y'all, is to put the, 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 the activities and the ministry of the church into the hands and to the hearts of our members. So we want you to be informed of all the many things that are happening here at CN Jenkins. Just call us, let us know how we can share this information. My friends, it's giving time. Somebody say amen. 
And because it's giving time, we want to celebrate as God has given God's very best to us. Today, if you're joining us for the first time online, let's indicate that somebody will be ministering to you. If you're a regular online person, we want to thank you for your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings. Now, because we are virtual today, uh, our offering is done by way of electronic giving or by way of the mail. Uh, you can also bring your offering by the church, but don't try to get out here in these on these slippery roads today. Just wait until next week or the next time you can be at the church. But you can give electronically. Right now, you'll see those screens, uh, screenshots on how you can give. Simply give your very best because God has given God very best back to us. Please join me now as we pray. Eternal God in heaven, giving you thanks for who you are and how you continue to move in our lives. Bless now, God, these gifts, these times, these offerings. Multiply them in a mighty way, God, that those who have a need, that need can be met. God, those who need help, they can get help. God, those who need encouragement and need to be inspired by the word, they know that this is a ministry to which they can be fed. Bless the hand that gives and the hand that receives. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.
think somebody believes that today. Somebody believes to expect a miracle, to receive a miracle, and most importantly, to share in a miracle. Please join us. God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, but more importantly, what our hearts have felt. But God, we know that you are in the miracle working business. And so we pray, God, that as we continue to worship you, that we will be open, God, we will be available, and God, we will be receptive to how you work miracles in our lives. God, we know that you are the potter and we are the clay. And so have your way, God, we pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts continue to be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our most blessed redeemer, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Say amen again. Come on, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. But we say God is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Come on, put some chat to me in the chat box. Tell me, let me know how you're doing. Let us worship God on this day. Again, again, choir, y'all make preaching easy. Amen. I'm glad. I am glad. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Today, 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 if you have your word, we invite you to turn uh, with us to the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 18, we'll be reading verses 1 through 11 from a New Living Translation of the Holy Word. Jeremiah chapter 18, reading verses 1 through 11 of a New Living Translation of the Holy Word. We invite you to read the Word together, knowing that we walk by faith and not by sight. Let us read the Word together. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, go down to the potter's shop, and I will speak to you there. And so I did as he told me and found the potter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. So he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. And then the Lord gave me this message, O oh, Israel, and can I not do to you as this potter has done to this clay? As the clay is to the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. If I announce that a certain nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, but then that nation renounces its evil ways, I will not destroy it as I had planned. And if I announce that I will plant and build up a certain nation or kingdom, but then that nation turns to evil and refuses to obey me, I will not bless it as I said I would. Therefore, Jeremiah, go and warn all Judah and Jerusalem. Say to them, this is what the Lord says. I am planning disaster for you instead of good. So turn your, your evil ways, each of you, and do what is right. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the sanctuary, seated in your homes. I want you to get, uh, get your pen and paper out so you can take some notes. But most importantly, I want you to get your Holy Ghost shout on. Amen. Uh, because I believe God has a word for us today. I'm going to read to you verse 4 from the new, excuse me, from the revised standard version of the Bible. It reads a little different than the New Living Translation. For verse 4 says, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Again, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into a, another shape, seemed best to him. And my friends, with the aid of the Holy Ghost and your encouragement, this day, I want to lift up this text. And if I could uh, hang out and preach a little bit on our subject, a miracle in the making, where marred becomes marvelous. A miracle in the making, where marred becomes marvelous. 
Church, I have discovered that just because something doesn't end up the way you plan does not mean you will never plan again. And just because reaching the finish line may take longer than you thought, that is no reason to avoid getting started. Somebody say amen if you can. All right, let me say it this way, y'all. Just because it may take several attempts and multiple tries to reach a goal, that should not discourage you from having goals. And just because the end product of your hard work may not be as clean and as polished as somebody else's, that does not mean that your hard work is not valuable. Let me see if I can explain it to you this way. For don't know if you know the word of golden repair. In Japanese, it is called kitsu kuura. Kitsu kuura is the uh, Japanese translation for golden repair. Y'all, it is the art of restoring broken pottery with gold so that the fracture literally illuminates a kind of physical expression of spirit. Kit, 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 kit. Kit Sukuroa, y'all, is a philosophy, and it's a philosophy that celebrates imperfection as the integral part of a story, not something to be disguised. The idea behind this train of thought, my friends, is that the artists believe that when something has suffered damage and when something has a history that shows some hurt in it, it becomes more beautiful. Let me say that again. This, this philosophy of kit, kit ora, y'all, is a train of thought where the artist believes that when something that has suffered damage and something that has a shattered and a shaky past of its history, y'all, it becomes more beautiful because it's what it's been through. In this philosophy, y'all, the truth, uh, truth of life is the object, or shall we say the person, y'all, becomes more valuable the moment it breaks and reveals that it's vulnerable. Okay, let me say it this way. It becomes valuable when it becomes vulnerable. It becomes of worth when it bends through some wreck. Okay, it's worth something greater, y'all, because it's been through something. And I don't know if I need to, to need to go too far or to reach too deep because I believe somebody worshiping right now knows what it means to be a wreck but also to be worth something. Somebody knows right now what it means to go through trouble but still come triumphant. Somebody right now can say, Reverend, I didn't know I was practicing a Japanese principle, but I'm so glad I am because, you see, it's in my cracks that I really see Christ. It's in my trouble that I really see the truth. It's in my hurt that I really, if anybody right now worshiping can give God praise and thanks for what God brings you through. Somebody online, go ahead and type right there and amen. Somebody put a thumbs up emoji because you know that it's only God being God by God's self has brought you through to get you to. Okay, it, it, again, it's not how you start, it's how you end up. It, it's not what they call you, it's what you answer to. Let me see if I can illustrate this to you. Dr. Phyllis, don't know if you know the story of what happened in the southern township of Ohio. The southern township of Ohio, y'all, is the home of the former mansion of the heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, y'all, had a mansion of over 25,000 square feet. That mansion, y'all, was larger than the physical plant here at C.N. Jenkins. But as at fate would have it, he owned it for 10 years, but then it went into arrears because of back taxes. And the township of Southern Ohio awarded the church, awarded the building, y'all, to the Living Word Sanctuary Church, okay? Mike Tyson's mansion in Ohio, y'all, went, went into foreclosure over taxes. It was then awarded to the Living Word Sanctuary Church, and they transformed, y'all, the swimming pool into a worship center. You didn't get it. They transformed 
transform y'all his trophy room into offices. You didn't get it. They transform his four car garage y'all into classrooms for students. Mike Tyson's mansion y'all where it's said he had all kinds of activity going on in it when he owned it but when God got it it became a house of worship. When God got it it became a greater use. When God got it okay somebody watching and listening right now knows when God gets a hold of you and what God gets a hold of what you have God can do a mighty work. You see, what we have to realize, y'all, is that that is what I call a miracle in the making. That is what I call transforming a mess into something that is marvelous. That is taking what's marred and making a miracle out of it. This is what we find in the text of, De of, of, of Jeremiah chapter 18. For the prophet, y'all, is told by God to go down to the potter's house. Now, Jeremiah, being a very obedient servant, did what God called him to do. And as he got up to go to the potter's house, he went down there, y'all, and apparently he spent all day observing what the potter was doing. Now that's key, y'all, because I don't want you to miss the point, y'all, that the potter was putting clay on the wheel, and the potter was making a vessel for the purpose, y'all, of making something profitable to sell at the marketplace. Don't miss that. The potter, y'all, he was not just going through an exercise. He was not just going through the motions. He was really doing it because he wanted to make something good and bring something good out of something that was plain and sell at the marketplace. And because because the potter, y'all, was doing what he was instructed to do, God sent Jeremiah to go observe how the potter does his work. And let me just pause right there to let you understand, y'all, that Jeremiah went to the potter's house. And know this, here's your tweet for the week. The pot is the potter's house, not the potter's showroom. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can help you understand that. It's like this, Brother Green. It was the potter's work room, not the potter's showroom. It was the place where it would get dusty and dirty. It would get smelly and stinky. It, it, it would, you're going to get some residue on you when you go into a work room. And I got to pause right there to let somebody know when God is working with you, when God is working on you, you've got to let people know around you it's going to get messy. Okay. When God does God's best work, my friends, you got to accept the fact it's going to get stinky. Okay, when God rolls up God's sleeves and puts you on the potter's wheel and try to take the sin out of your life, it may get noisy. But you've got to be faithful to Almighty God and, and diligent to his word and committed to his will because the potter knows best what's for you. You see, the good news, y'all, Jeremiah watched all day long, and he went home knowing that he had seen a miracle take place. But when he went home, he went home a new person. I got to hang out there for a little bit to let somebody know that when you come to the potter's house, and I ain't talking about T.D. Jake's place down in Dallas. I'm talking about the potter's house, the place where you learn the word, the place where you experience God, the place where you're fed, the place where you grow. When you go to the potter's house, I want you to know you will go home differently. You will go home changed. You will go home excited. You will go home confirmed. You see, here's what I want you to understand. The first lesson we learned from Jeremiah down at the potter's house, at the potter's wheel, is that the potter always is at work with the clay. Okay. The potter, y'all, is always at work with the clay. The potter doesn't take a day off. The potter does not, does not take a, a, an extra extended vacation. Okay, the potter, y'all, is always, at, okay, you don't believe me, Dr. Monroe, what does the word say? He never sleeps, he never slumbers. Uh, what does it say? He, he, he's, he's sitting high and he's looking low. He's always working some things out in our life. Jeremiah learned, y'all, that the potter is always at work. You see, he understood that clay itself, unless you work it, it's going to get hard. 
He understood that clay itself, unless you keep putting some moisture on it and you keep working into it and kneading it, it will not take the shape you want it to have. Y'all hear me. Jeremiah came to understand that clay could never in and of itself create something by itself. Oh, I got to hang out there, Miss Ruth. They didn't get it. You've got to understand, he recognized that clay in and of itself could not make something of itself. And what that means, Miss Cynthia, is this, is that we can't make nothing of ourselves. It's all in the hands of Almighty God. You could not claim that I got it right, tight, and put together without first asking God, have thine way. You could not say that I'm going to do this and do that until God say it's God's will. And you see, you got to take a checkup from the neck up every now and then and stop thinking you're the boss of the applesauce and you can do everything all by yourself. No, sugar baby, you're going to need somebody to help you. You're going to need somebody to encourage you. You're going to need somebody to lift you up. And you know if the truth be told you ought to go ahead and give God thanks right there for the somebodies in your life. The somebody that prayed. The somebody that believed. The somebody that encouraged. Go ahead and type some initials if you don't want to give the full name in the chat box right there. That somebody somewhere made sure that you were going to go forward and not go back. Oh, understand, y'all, God works with, 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 with what God has, and, and that's good news. Well, that's what the potter did. The potter worked with the clay that he had. You see, we are the clay. God is the potter, and God will work with what we give God. Uh, what you're saying, here it is. If, if you give God hope, God's going to work on some hope. If, if you give God a, a, a love, God will work in your love. If you give God your dreams, God will work in your dreams. If you give God aspirations, God will work in your aspirations. Now, on the other hand, if you give God a plate full of doubt, that's all got God got to work with. If you give God some fear, Miss Deb, all you have that God is give, going to work with is your fear. If you give God frustration, God's got to work through your frustration. If you give God junk, God's got to work through your... You've got to be careful what you give God to work with. <laughs> Let me see if I can help you understand this. You see, God is always excited about working with the unexciting things in our lives. God is always trying to do put some extra in front of the ordinary things in your life. Because when you understand the grace of Almighty God, God is an extraordinary kind of God. God is always at work in your life and in my life. And, and, and God is doing greater things in our lives because of our ability and our commitment to serve. Got to give a shout out right here as we go into the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday because it was Dr. King who said it this way. He says, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. He said it like this, you don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. I, I like that, y'all, because what I learned in this quote from Dr. King, y'all, is that it's all about service. It's all about making a difference. It's all about standing up and being present and accounted for. That is why my shout out today on this King holiday is none other than Miss Claudette Colvin. Miss Claudette Colvin, don't know if you know her story, Brother L, but on March 2nd, 1955, found herself as a 15-year-old being arrested because she sat down on a segregated bus in Montgomery, Alabama and refused to move and give her seat up to a white woman. Claudette, y'all, on March the 2nd, 1955, sat down. She sat down because she said, in essence, it was her what? Constitutional right. You're not getting it. Claudette, y'all, on March the 2nd, 1955, she sat down. And as she sat down, she became the first person 
person to start the Montgomery Bus Boycott Movement in March. Yes, we give credit to, to Ms. Rosa Parks. Yes, we acknowledge her for being that person that sat down in December. But you got to roll the camera back to understand it was Claudette that on March the 2nd of 1955, at 15 years old, she sat down. Now, what's interesting to understand, unfortunately, what happens here, Sister Gray, is that Claudette, though she sat down, she was a teenager. But the NAACP, that, you know what that is, that's our organization, would not give her credit because at 16, right after she sat down at 15, she got pregnant. And they did not want to have the civil rights mother of the movement to be a pregnant teenager. It's amazing how we can draw the line and separate and put folk who don't fit according to our character or our, or, our, or, our, or our criteria, but we will put it on somebody. Yes, they gave it to Miss Rosa Parks, 42, married, seamstress. It gave, it made a good photo op. But the real sister who sat down so the movement could start was a 15-year-old, 16-9-year-old, young, pregnant black woman, okay? You're still not getting it. You see, if the NAACP would have done a little Bible study, they would have found out that Jesus' mama was a 14-year-old single woman when she got pregnant. If they would have done just a little bit of investigation, they would have understood that God still speaks to whomever God wants to speak through. You see, that's why I got to give the shout out to Miss Claudette because here's what she says. She says, I, I, I like my grandchildren to be able to see that their grandmother stood up for something a long time ago. Here's what she said that made me shout, y'all. She says, I knew I had to do something. I just didn't know where or when to do it. I like that, y'all, because it goes back to what Dr. King says, is that if you have a heart to serve and a willingness to serve, then God will use you in God's service. You got to be patient with folk as they're going through things. You, you know the song, Albertina Walker, James Cleveland, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. And when God gets through with me, when God gets through with me, when God gets through with me, I, 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 shall, I shall come forth as what? Pure gold. You see, you got to realize that God being the potter and God uh, working, with, working with us as clay knows that there's a miracle inside of our mess. Church, God is not finished with any of us yet. So we've got to keep pressing on. We've got to keep looking up. We've got to keep going up. You see, there's a ministry of the potter, and I don't want you to miss this. The ministry of the potter, here it is, that the potter, y'all, he sees problems with the vessel. The ministry of the potter, y'all, it is that the potter, he understands there's a perception to his or her work. To understand the ministry of the, of the potter is the potter, y'all, has to bring patience. You see, don't miss this because as God works in our lives, recognize that God's going to see the problem before God gives us the praise. Okay? <laughs> recognize that the potter has a ministry, and the ministry of the potter, y'all, is to see the problem in the vessel. And the problem in the vessel, according to the text, it says to us, y'all, that there were some lumps in the clay. And the lumps in the clay, y'all, are revealed as a lesson of Jeremiah because the lumps represent the imperfection of the clay. You see, clay containing lumps must be dealt with. Okay, okay, right now as you are in the sanctuary and as you are at home, there is somebody that you know got some lumps in their life. And if they don't want to face it in order to fix it, you might as well just help them understand. You tell them, say, your lumps need to be dealt with. You see, Jeremiah, y'all, he, he watched the potter encounter the lumps in the clay, and he saw that there were imperfections in the clay, and he understood that unless you're going to fix it, you, 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 you got to face it first, and, and, and you got to confess your mess if you want to get out of it. 
I'm preaching harder than you responding, so I got to give it to you again. Y'all, 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 you can't fix it until you face it. Uh, y'all, y'all, you got to confess it before, before you can be relieved of it. You see, Jeremiah observed that their process, y'all, included that the potter, he had a mallet. What is a mallet? A mallet, y'all, is a hammer, a hammer with a large uh, um, utensil at the end of it used, y'all, to beat out the imperfections in the clay. It was a mallet, and the mallet was hit every time there was a imperfection in the clay there were bubbles in the clay and the mallet had to beat it out there were some impurities in the clay and the mallet had to beat it out there were, there was there were some damages in the clay and the mallet had to beat it out there was some waters in the clay and the mallet had to beat it out now you know God is the same way because God wants to make sure that we don't have any imperfections in our testimony any imperfections in our story any imperfections in our life so so God has to beat out that, that sin of our life. God has to beat out some arrogance in our life. God has to beat out that spirit of can't nobody tell you nothing in your life. God has to beat out that spirit of backbiting and back talking in your life. God has to beat out that spirit of thinking that you all that and a bag of something else. God has to beat out that spirit and every time that mallet comes into your life, God is saying I'm making a good piece of clay. I'm making a good vessel. I'm making something that is profitable. You ought to give God thanks right now that God knows how to beat the stuff out of your life so you can be worth something later. All the good news, y'all, is that Jeremiah is observing, observing that, that, that while, the, while the potter is beating out the imperfections in that clay, there's also a wheel that's turning that nobody can see. There's a wheel that the potter is using. Now, when we see pottery being made, we see that wheel on the top. But, but if you know anything about a potter, you've got to realize that potter is also pumping and potter is also kicking and that potter is also working and a wheel you don't even see. But you know if that wheel at the bottom ain't working, that wheel ain't the top, it ain't going to spin. Okay, okay, let me see if I can help you. See, sometimes there are things going on in our life that we don't know how they happen. But there's a wheel that's being turned in the wheel. Ezekiel says it's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. Way up in the middle of the air. There's a wheel, y'all, that God has us on right now. And God is getting us right. And God is getting us straight. And God is getting us to the place where we will depend more upon God and less on ourselves. And I want to warn somebody that just because you can't see the wheel turning don't mean the wheel ain't moving. All oh, the good news of the text, y'all, is that the part of y'all, he had a sense of perception. And I like that. I like that because what it means to me is that the potter recognized that there's something even greater in the clay than the naked eye could ever see. You see, this is the third point that Jeremiah reveals to us in this text, and that is the potter never gives up. The potter always stays steadfast. The potter keeps on hanging. And the potter doesn't give up on the lump of clay just like God will never give up on us. Y'all, I like that because, you see, the persistence and the perception of the potter also helps us know that there is a persistence of patience that must be done. I, I've already made reference to it, Brother L. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. And I got to confess, you know, I say confession, Mr. Miss Evan, is good for the soul and bad for the reputation. But I will confess that since God ain't through with me and I know that I've got some rough edges to be smoothed out, I know I've got some holes in my life that need to be plugged, I know I've got some parts of my spirit that need to be strengthened, I'm going to confess and I'm going to ask, please be patient with me. Because God is not through with me yet. Now, that's my confession. But those worshiping today, you got a confession too. Because I don't want you to be surprised that when you look in the mirror, the mirror does not tell a lie. 
you see, there are things on your resume that you've written for us to see, but there's some stuff that you left off that made you who you are. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. J Jeremiah recognized that, that as God was patient and God had a perception about things, he recognized that God was also able to, to see the good in people. Why, how can you say that? Because, you see, God specializes in some clay people. Come here, Jacob. Is that not you, or old shy, clefty, clefty, old sneaky, old eyed, old Jacob? Is that not you who cheated for the birthright? Is that not you who got cheated and had two women, married two sisters? Is that not you, Jacob, who cheated your own brother? But did not God see through the cheat and still make him a chief? Okay, you're not getting it. Come here, David. Is that not you who committed murder? Is that not you who slept with another man's wife? Is that not you who lied? But also, is that not you, David, who danced before the Lord? And the Lord said, I am pleased. You see, God still does great work even with cheaters. Okay, you're not getting it. Come here, Jonah. Is that not you who said, Lord, I'm going to do your will? But Jonah went in the opposite direction where God told him to go. And I'm looking at some Jonas on this Sabbath day. I'm looking at some Jonah Mays too on this Sabbath day because you told God one thing, you did a totally different other thing and God still used Jonah just like God used you. Come here Simon Peter, was that not you on the night of Jesus' arrest when you got all big, bad, and bold, got out your switchblade, cut off the man's ear, Jesus picked it up off the ground, put it back on the man's ear and still you said, I don't know who you are. Did not Jesus use Peter because on the day of Pentecost, Reverend Peter got up and preached and 3,000 souls were saved. Is that not how God works? Okay, let's don't go to the Bible. Let's go to your life and your life and your neighborhood and your community. Let's go to your resume. Has not God used you in a special way? You see, God used you, y'all, because there's a message of the part. The message is God must be in control. And the message is, is that God is calling us to live in compliance. The message is, is that God needs to control our lives. Jeremiah, I need you to go because I'm going to show you some things at the potter's house. Jeremiah went. He came back home. But as he came back home, God spoke to him again. And God says, don't I have the prerogative? Come here, Bobby Brown. Don't I have the ability to change my mind? If I want to change my mind, if people need to go straight, they need to do better, can I not tell them to go straight and do better? And y'all, I wish, I wish the text went in on good news because I stopped at verse 11, but verse 12 goes on to say that the people said it ain't going to happen. It ain't all that. I don't really need to change my ways, but God being a God of justice and a God of truth, and a God of righteousness, God did come through and God punished the people because they did not heed to the cry. They didn't heed to the cry because there was a ministry of, of, of a con compassion and, and a ministry of compliance that they were supposed to adhere to. And, and you know, y'all, when we don't stand up for truth, we, we lay down for a lie. When we don't speak up for those who need to be spoken up for and with, y'all, our silence is compliance to the evil of the world. And that's why, that's why I cannot help but to give my closing illustration, y'all, on Miss Mamie Till. Miss Mamie Till, as you know, her story is being broadcast now uh, on the story in the life of, of, of Mr. Emmett Till, the lynching of Emmett Till. Briefly, here is her story. Her son was down in Mississippi visiting some relatives in the summer, y'all. And in that summer of his visit, he was falsely accused of whistling at a white woman and the vigilantes, the Ku Klux Klan, found him, took him out of the house and lynched him, killed him, left his body buried in a river. When they found his body, it was so bloated and it was so distorted, y'all, that they sent it back to Chicago in a sealed casket, locked up, hoping never to be seen again. But Mamie Teal realized, y'all, that what you've done to my boy, I'm going to show the world what you're doing to it. Now, understand this.
this is 1955, y'all. This is the same time, the same period, y'all, when Claudette sat down so that she had a constitutional right. This is the same time, y'all, the Brown versus Board of Education. This is the same time when segregation was legal. The same time, y'all, when people who are dark skin like you and me right now could not go in the front door of anybody's establishment. The same time, y'all, when people were being lynched, there was not an anti-lynching bill, which meant that it was not legal, but it was not, not punishable because it was not on the books. Understand this, y'all. That was only some 40 years later that the politicians decided, ooh, this is wrong. Now, this is what Mamie Till did. Mamie Till's son was taken from her. Here's her quote. She says, God told me I have taken one from you, but I will give you thousands. Okay. M M Mamie Till recognized, y'all, is that though she lost her son, her son's living and her, her death, his death would not be in vain. Mamie Till began to write, y'all, one of her one of her books, The Death of Innocence, the story of the hate crime that changed America. Mamie Till Mobley, here's what she says, y'all. With each day, I give thanks for the blessings of life, the blessings of another day and chance to do something with it. Something good, she says, something significant, she says, and something helpful. Understand, y'all, a mother had lost her son to a lynching, her mother never to see her son's smiling face again, a mother who had to deal with the racism of the 50s. She says, no, I'm not going to let my son's life be in vain, nor am I going to let hatred control my life. So Mamie, y'all, started a foundation to bring education to those who needed to know what liberation was all about. Mamie, y'all, she was so strong in her wit and her commitment, y'all, that she says, here it is, strong women don't merely birth children, they cultivate them to render service. Mamie Till is a shout out, y'all, but Mamie Till is a child of God who recognized that God being the potter, putting the clay together, God being the one that beats out the impurities, God being the one that brings us together, God being the one that ultimately, as Dr. King would say, the ultimate measure of a person is not where they stand in moments of comfort and convenience, but where they stand in times of challenge and controversy. Oh, y'all, I want you to hear me on this King Sunday. I want you to hear that hymn of the church that says, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I, I am the clay. Mold me and shake me after thy will. Have thine own way, Lord. I realize that you got me on this wheel spinning for a reason, and I'm spinning now, God, because uh, I've, I'm, I'm made, being made into something. I've got some imperfections on me and around me, but God, I'm willing to yield to you. Because I know every time that you, you shake me, every time that you pull something out of me, every time that you put some more moisture on me to keep me not from getting stiff neck and stubborn, I, I know you're making me into a, a valuable vessel. Have thine own way. Today, I want to pray that God takes somebody's life and begin to mold it and shape it. I'm praying for you today, Mama, that God will help you be a stronger mother, a more committed mother. I'm praying for you, Daddy, that God will show you not what you've seen on television, but God will show you in the Word what it means to lead and what it means to be a priest of your house. I'm praying for some relationships today, some marriage needs to get back on the wheel. Some marriage right now needs to have some more spinning. Some marriage right now needs to have the air bubbles popped out of it because God is saying if I don't pop these bubbles out of this marriage right now, it's getting ready to crack. Some, some, some relationship, whoever you may be, Yes, you're striving hard. You're trying to make more money, but you can't get sleep at night. Yes, you're exercising, but your exercising still doesn't do anything for the other physical and mental conditions of your life. Yes, you're, you're, trying, to, you're trying to cope, but, but coping is really not working, especially when you're self-medicating. God is saying, I need you to get back on the wheel. 
get back on the wheel because I need to have my way in your life. And I invite you as you hear this word, as you receive it today, that you will also hear God saying, I love you. And God saying, I want the very best for you. And God saying, I, I, I brought you to this place so that you can be fed by my word. And I want to pray with you right now, whatever the need is, whatever the hurt, whatever the desire of hope is, I want to pray. Those in the sanctuary, those watching, I want to pray. And I invite you to pray that you see yourself on that wheel and that you accept that God is doing a greater thing in you. Lord God, we bow our heads and humble our hearts and ask that you will indeed speak in a way that you will have your way. Today, God, as your word has been preached, as your word has been sung by our choir, God, as your word has been shared in fellowship, we pray, God, that you will speak. God, somebody needs to hear what Jeremiah heard. Somebody's instructed now to go to the potter's house. So, God, we thank you for bringing us to the potter's house. God, we thank you for reminding us that you want to make a prize vessel out of us. But you're going to have to do some shaping before we go to the place of being at the market. God, before others can see your glory, you, you, need, to, you need to work on our story. And so, God, we yield our will to you now. God, another somebody is, is here today praying for a family member, praying for a co-worker, praying for a student, praying for somebody who's poured into their life. And that person, God, needs you today. And God, we pray that, that as you show Jeremiah the possibilities, may you show us the possibilities of our life. But God, somebody has tuned in and we thank you that they they listen. God, somebody is watching it for the second, third, maybe fourth time, and we pray each time you will give them new insights. God, somebody else, just listen to a little bit of the word, and that little bit is enough to keep them going on. God, you know our hearts. You know what we need, so we pray that your will is done. And God, as your will is done, we pray that not only will we be better, but our, those around us will be stronger. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, I thank you so much for being a part of this service. Thank you for being in the space, and thank you for watching and listening. But most importantly, thank you for being obedient to the word of Almighty God. I stand before you and for the invitation for whosoever will, and let them come. If you're desirous of a church home, we invite you to call us, email us. If you want someone to pray with you, do the same. We'll do all we can to make sure that you and your faith life grows in the Word. We've got deacons and elders. We've got ministers here. We've got people who love the Lord, and we want the very best for you in your life. Amen. I love you. I care about you. I wish you the best on this Martin Luther King holiday. Be safe out there. Help somebody where you can. And also allow others to come into your life and to help you. One of the greatest things that we could ever say is thank you. And one of the things that we say thank you for is because somebody has done something kind to us. So let's be kind to one another. Let's be faithful to Almighty God. Let's be joyous in the Word. And let us do God's will. Now unto him was able to keep you from stumbling and falling. Who's able to present you faultless for his Father, strong in glory. May grace, mercy, and peace be with you this day and forevermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, that all the God's children say amen, amen, amen. I love you. Have a wonderful day.